Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. Of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. And welcome back to the DCEU Daily. And welcome to Thursday's edition of the DCEU Daily. And you're all very welcome to be part of this show that's gaining more and more traction every day. So, Ezra Miller posted this on his Instagram. What's it all about? This is an article from a site posted a couple of weeks ago, I think. I can't remember uh, what site it is, and it doesn't matter. Basically, it says, uh, quoting Ben Affleck, saying that um, his appearance in the Flash movie was very satisfying, as his appearance in, in the Snyder Cut was, and it was a great way to play Batman one last time. Ezra Miller underlined one last time, and then puts ha, ha, ha. So what does this all mean? Well, I can confirm to you on this very channel today that Warner Brothers were very impressed by Sony, Marvel Studios and Disney Studios' tactics in the denials of um, Tobey Maguire and Andy Garfield being in Spider-Man No Way Home. And I think they've decided to kind of go with a similar thing. And I think one of the things we've all been asking ever since Justice League has been Will Henry Cavill and Ben Affleck return as Batman and Superman again. I think at the time after I saw Justice League, I was saying at first, these guys were both done. But of course, we are going to see Batfleck again. We're going to see him in the Flash movie. The question mark is now, is that it? Ben Affleck has con been contradicting himself left, right and centre. He went on to Jimmy Kimmel and said... I'm not Batman. And then we found out he agreed to be in the portion of the Flash movie as his Batman. We also found out he agreed to appear in Zack Snyder's uh, Snyder Cut, Justice League Snyder Cut, right? To do some extra film, shoot some extra footage. And so he's kind of still the DCEU's Batman until we see what happens to his Batman in the Flash movie. Ezra Miller has been saying a lot of things recently is he is he is he going nuts? No, of course he's not. Um, I do feel that Ezra Miller is very very excited. This is going to be the highlight of his career. He loves playing the Flash. He's very excited. He's very hyper. But I think this is all part of a studio tactic, and I think that Ben Affleck is part of that studio tactic because it creates a mystery for the Flash movie that you're going to want to know. Does Batfleck die in the Flash movie? Is he deleted? Does he vanish? I think him vanishing and him being a mystery that Ezra Miller's The Flash, Barry Allen kind of starts to have to investigate after the Flash movie could be a thing. We already heard rumours um, from certain journalists and scoopers that this whole Flashpoint situation and the way the universe is going to change off the Flashpoint is going to delete certain elements of the DCEU, but people are going to remember these elements and remember that they're not there. And people are going to have to try and work out what's going on. And this is going to be all part of the central DCEU universe kind of arc and mystery. I think that is a clever thing to do. And I think it's genius. So, what does this mean? Well, look. As I say, I think this is a studio initiative. I, look, it's given a lot of people a lot of hope, or is it false hope? I know that people who are part of the Restore the Snyderverse community will now be very, very excited. This means he's going to make the Batfleck movie. This means we're going to restore the Snyderverse. I'm not saying those things are not plausible or possible, but you have to calm down a bit, right? Because this could also mean that he's not done as Batman in the central DCEU of Walter Hamada. And, you know, this kind of Justice League universe, that they're, this new rebooted Justice League universe, they're rebooting. There's a lot of things at the moment that we can't really piece together in terms of what is Michael Keaton's future. You know, we know now that Michael Keaton is in the Batgirl movie. That doesn't mean that Ben Affleck isn't also in the Batgirl movie. What this means is Ezra Miller is telling us, which I think with permission from Warner Brothers, I don't think he's going against the studio doing this. I think what he's saying here is he's saying that Ben Affleck will play Batman again. But as I say, Ben Affleck said some interesting things. Ben Affleck has said that he's done with huge IP characters and huge blockbuster movies. 
I still think, and I've predicted this in the past, that I still feel that he and Henry are open to cameoing in the DCEU, and I think that could be their future, future for sure. So I think Batfleck will be this mystery. Where's he gone? Where's he vanished to after the Flashpoint movie? And this is going to have to be a mystery that, you know, um, Ezra Miller's The Flash, Barry Allen, is going to have to kind of investigate and look into. And I think ultimately we will see Batfleck in the DCEU again. But as I say, it will be in cameos. It will be it will be appearances. And I think that's the future of Batfleck. So I don't think he or Cavill are going to vanish altogether, but they could vanish for the time being. And ultimately, later on down the line, they are discovered as a missing piece of the DCEU. I, as I've already said, I think that's a very, very clever idea. But when you see this from someone who's going to be starring in a DCEU movie this November, he's trying to tell you something. The studio is trying to tell you something. Maybe it, it's all part of this kind of playful situation that the studio and Ben and the movie are having with the audience. What happens to Batfleck? And they want you to guess. They want you to be excited because what it does, it gets, it motivates you and embroils you within the build-up and the marketing of the movie. So this is a very, very good thing. But basically, if there, if there, if if you, when you get this, to me, it means that Ben Affleck won't be done as Batman after the Flash movie. I would listen. I've been told a lot of things about this movie. I know a lot of things about this movie, but also I'm not sure what's true and what's not. So I've really got to be careful here. But also I have a great um, respect for you, my audience and my subscribers. Thank you for all the support, especially during COVID. Um, I've got COVID right now, so you can see that my videos are not up to scratch. really hurts when I talk. I'm really bunged up. But I want to do these videos because I want to interact with you guys and girls or however else you identify as everyone is welcome here on Movies TV Mad, on the DCEU Daily and whatever other videos I do. But of course, this is very, very intriguing. All I think this means is that this won't be the last time he plays Batman, but it may be the last time he plays Batman for a while. It could be that situation. And so this is a good thing. This is not a bad thing. This is an exciting thing. But all I want you to think about is hold back on is the people from the Restore the Snyderverse community. Don't get your hopes up too high. But we do know there's a lot of talk now. It's been announced now that very quickly, very shortly, I think in the next few months, the um, Warner Discovery Company will be official. Um, AT&T and Warner Media will hand, you know, transfer all their entertainment element over to Warner Discovery. And, you know, they'll, they'll go back to being a telecommunications company. So they've already been talking about that. And, of course, Restore the Snyderverse fans, the community of Restore the Snyderverse, believe that this is a great opportunity with um, Discovery coming in to, you know, to communicate with the company and say, listen, Zack Snyder's Justice League had a lot of love, it made a lot of money, and we want you to restore the Snyderverse, and there's nothing wrong with that, and they could indeed restore the Snyderverse, and Zack is very motivated still, even though he's busy with Rebel Moon, to restore the Snyderverse, he wants to finish his arc, I want him to finish his arc, his movies were absolutely great, but I don't want you to get your hopes up, but if we did restore the Snyderverse, I'm 100% sure Ben Affleck would be interested in coming back as Batman, um, if not for anything else, to finish his arc in Zack Snyder's you know, Justice League story. We know he's going to get killed off in Justice League 3, probably the end of Justice League 3. But I don't believe that this is about restoring the Snyderverse. I believe this is about Ben Affleck's direct future in the you know in the multiverse strategy and where is he going to be it could be that he and cavill are kind of in an else world somewhere else this of course would allow henry cavill to have his own superman content in his movies on an else world maybe maybe not necessarily in a zack snyder else world but maybe that's what they're doing maybe that's what they're doing i've always kind of i theorized here on this channel and on this show many times saying that after the flash maybe zack gets his own pocket universe his own elseworld and his cast 
his characters are going to be there. But of course, this is complicated because Warner Brothers are happy with Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman and very happy with Jason Momoa's Aquaman because their movies made a lot of money and they weren't controversial. So that would be the complicated element of it. Do they pick and choose what or, what? What members of Snyder's Justice League, what members of his cast are put in a pocket universe? It's interesting to find out what they, they do. And, and, and I know we kind of live in a kind of cultural back, a back set now where people want to know everything now before they see the content. Well, you can't. You're going to be in the dark for quite a while yet. But as I say, this is really, really, really good news. And this means because an actor who works within the DCEU is scoffing at this being Affleck's final time. And as I said earlier, as I said to you, when I mean, where is this, this, this scooper No Time to Shine who started a Twitter account in October who was telling us that Batgirl and Supergirl were going to replace Affleck's um, Batman and Cavill's Superman? Where is this person now? Well, their account's still there. They're saying other stuff. I told you not to trust him. I told you not to trust Grace Randolph. And this proves that you cannot trust them because basically... A, a, you know, a DCEU actor is coming out and literally telling you that Affleck isn't going to be done after the Flash movie, which is very, very exciting for anyone who loves DC, anyone who loves Batfleck, anyone who loves Cavill's Superman. There's things that you just don't know about at this moment in time. And this will be the place to find this stuff out as we build up to the Flash movie, Black Adam, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. There's things that you don't know that are developing. I believe that Walter Hamada and um, uh, Jim Lee and Anne Sarnoff have put together a very good idea to please everyone. But as James Gunn directly said the other day, this is not just about one version, one thing. It's called a multiverse strategy for a reason. It's to please everyone who's interested in DC. So everyone has got a place to watch the content of DC live action that they want to watch. And I think that is the most important thing. So finally, what I would say about this is, yes, he's telling you that Batfleck will still be involved after the Flash movie. And I think we can take as read. It means the same thing for Henry Cavill's future too. So we'll have to wait and see. But this is a great new major development. Thank you, Ezra Miller. I've got your The Batman movie updates coming up very, very soon. But just going back to Ezra movie, uh, Ezra, Ezra movie, that should be his name. That'd be good for an actor, wouldn't it? Ezra movie. No, going back to Ezra Miller and what he did on his Instagram story and pouring scorn about it being Batflex, the Flash movie being Batflex final movie and people DMing me, you know, in, you know, in, in their droves saying, Mick, what the hell is going on? And what I would say to you is, um, as I've already said, is that there's a lot going on within DC. This is going to be our year. And I think what Walter Hamada has put together is great. It's a great way to please everyone. And you're going to be happy. If you like Henry Cavill, you're going to be happy. If you like Ben Affleck's Batman, you're going to be happy. If you're interested in Sasha Calais Supergirl or um, Leslie Grace's um, Batgirl, you're going to be happy. There's not... It's not a one-size-fits-all anymore. And we discussed this when the Snyder Cut was announced. There is going to be a place for all DC fans. Not just one type of DC fans, but for everyone. And I would suggest that you subscribe to my channel. It may not be very professional. The picture may not be very good. But I do know what I'm talking about. And I do have the same passion for DC and these characters that you do. I am, I'm not John Campier, I'm not Grace Randolph, I'm never going to, going to have the attention they have, and I'm never going to try and stir the pot to make money and be successful. My goal is to make videos out of passion, and if that makes me successful through my passion, that's great. And I'll be grateful to you people who have come in and supported me. But at the end of the day, it's not about success. Success has different kind of... It has different and kind of symbols, doesn't it, success? And success for me is having a video upload successfully and the few people who support me watching it 
and enjoying it. So what I would say that's what's going on within the DCEU right now after what Ezra Miller's done on his Instagram story, there's lots and lots going on. I'm not going to sit here and spill the beans, but what I'm going to tell you is that you're all going to be very, very happy. Now, something else that should make you very happy is that the Batman movie directed and written by Matt Reeves is coming out on March the 4th. And look at this. This is a magazine you're going to want to buy. So Total Film, our new issue, all about the Batman, is finally here, featuring our exclusive coverage of the most hotly anticipated superhero movie of the year, of the year of, the gener of this generation. <coughs> Plus so much more. Order a copy to your door through this link. So you should really order a copy. I do not work for Total Film, by the way, but um, I've ordered my copy. Anyway. So let's go with your updates. Right, there's a few quotes from some people involved in the Batman movie. So we're going to spend a few minutes today here on the DCEU Daily just reading out these quotes. This is from Jeffrey Wright on Gordon via Total Film. Mike Gordon is very much partnered with Rob's Batman. And so there is, as Gary Oldman once described it, very much a Watson to the Batman's homes in our storytelling. Yes, and I mean Gary Oldman's Jim Gordon and... Um, Bales, Christian Bales, I, I forgot his first name for a minute, uh, Christian Bales, Batman, were kind of Holmes and Watson. But Batman is inspired by Sherlock Holmes and Jim Gordon is kind of like Watson. If you if you see how what he looks like in the comics, you could even say that he does look like Dr. Watson from Sherlock Holmes. If you look at his design and his moustache and all of that. And even though, you know, Jeffrey Wright is a, is a is an actor of colour, that makes no difference. If you look at him, he does look like uh, Dr. Watson as well. But it's very, very interesting. Uh, yeah, you haven't seen a live-action version of Jim Gordon like this before because this one is taken directly from the comics, even within his relationship with Batman. So that's a very exciting thing. It, it, it's a brilliant performance. Jeffrey Wright is one of our greatest actors around today. And I was always excited when he was cast in this role. Let's just make sure there's no more from that one. So we go on. Because there's a more... Uh, Quotes from actors on the film. So where are we? I'll be right back. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. So, Matt Reeves discusses his planning for the Batman via Total Film. You can't make something that's like, this is Chapter 1. You just can't. You could do something that could be Chapter 1, but it, if it doesn't stand on its own, you're not really doing anything. So what he's talking about is making his movie about worrying about it, about chapter two and chapter three. This film is chapter one, of course it is, but he focused on telling his story, and I think that's what he means. So let's go to the next part of that. So the hope is that the world that we've created is something that draws people in, that people get engaged with, engaged in this character and then that will mean that there will be more stories and so in that sense there could be a chapter one but as a movie it's the entire story so what he's saying is that it is chapter one but it doesn't feel like a chapter one um seeing this film i i will compare this to george lucas's star wars episode four and new hope and i think that that's the best part of George Lucas's Star Wars or any Star Wars you have ever seen. That was my favourite because not only was it kind of a chapter one, but it felt like a self-contained adventure that you could put on and watch whenever you wanted. And I think this is what the Batman is as well. Of course, the tones of, the, of both movies are very different, but you get what I'm trying to say. So, what was important for me was to set out an arc for this character that would be an arc we haven't seen in the films before because we had to find a way to make this story mine, which they did. That's part of the... Now we go um, to Alfred now because um, these are your The Batman updates. That's part of the gap with them. Bruce is an extremely emotional character and the only thing that really links them are skills. In the same way that the things that he was able to uh, teach Bruce in his younger years were fighting skills and code cracking skills. 
Andy Serkis reveals more details on his Alfred. In this version, he's a lot younger, probably than other iterations of the character. It's also a very knotty and complicated moment in Bruce's evolution. He has a great sense of duty. He's very practical, not emotional. So that's very interesting. And I don't think Alfred's ever been that emotional, which is interesting. I think Michael Goff's um, Alfred was slightly a softer kind of cuddly teddy bear than the other versions have been. We go back to Jeffrey Wright's Jim Gordon again. I think it's been a theme that he's well-intentioned and internally overwhelmed. He's just up to his gills. And so this relationship at the beginning that we see is newly formed. This is year two, of course, of Batman's work. So it's fresh. Matt Reeves breaks down Batman's gear for Total Film. He's on this obsessive mission. He's a rich guy who's able to use the money to do this stuff, but he's doing it himself. So I want it at a practical level for you to see the seams in everything that he's doing. And again, that's another part of the movie you're all going to absolutely love. So very, very exciting. There you are, the Batman updates for today. How excited are you for the Batman? How excited am I for you to see the Batman so we can finally discuss it on this channel together? Over 100%. There isn't a percent, I can tell you. There isn't numbers out there. Infinite numbers. That's how excited I am for you lot. Everyone who wants to see this film and consume this movie multiple times to do so. We don't have long left now. What is it today? Is it February the 4th, 5th? Whatever. We've got, we've got about a month till we can finally talk about this movie and I'm sure there will be uh, early screenings for some members of the public pre-March the 4th as well. This film changes everything as we've discussed before. This film is moulding a brand new DC universe, Earth 2, but it's telling a self-contained Batman story and I think if you're a fan of the comics, buckle up. You're going to love it. This has been the DCEU Daily. I met your host with the most. Just ask your girlfriends and your wives. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you never miss this perfection. And I'll see you again tomorrow with even more DCEU Daily. Until then, goodbye. Au revoir. Alfina Sane.